Today I'm going to introduce you to Excel and show you how to get your first spreadsheet up and running and functional within a few minutes. Now Excel is one of the Office suites, so Microsoft Office suite, so we'll show you how to load it. Go down till you find Microsoft Office. There it is. And you click on there to open a new spreadsheet. Expand it to the full page. And now the way a spreadsheet works is there are columns running vertically and rows running horizontally. The columns are uh, identified by letters and the rows are identified by numbers. So this, let's go there for instance, this particular cell within the spreadsheet is identified by B, the column, and 2, the row. So that cell is called B2, and if you look there, because I've clicked on it, there, there's B2 appearing so that I know where I am. So let me just demonstrate. I uh, record rainfall, so I use it for that. So it's really useful to me. So just start a spreadsheet, give it a title. And then the next thing you're going to need some headings. So the rainfall uh, we'd have to record every day. So we'll have our days here. And uh, Excel is very clever because if you put one and then you follow it by two, and then you left click, drag down, let go, uh, and you select those two cells together. Excel will realize that you're starting to form a series and it will predict wh what the next number is. So if you hover on the bottom right hand corner of your selected area, you'll see a black cross appear. Left click there, drag it down. And as you're going down, you'll see next to where you are, it'll give you the number of rows that you've already covered. So there's 30 rows I've covered. And there's 31, and that's the maximum number of days in a month, obviously. And then we'll probably want a total. And then going the other way, we want uh, to record each month's rainfall. So we'll start with January. Now again, I've selected that area, I've put January in it. If I hover there, the black cross appears on the bottom right hand corner. Left click, hold down, drag. And now you see what it's doing. It's predicting that I'm using a series of months. And there it's telling me I'm at December now. So I can let go. And there it is. It's auto filled in all the months for me. Saves a lot of trouble. So we'll probably want a total in this direction as well. There we go. So now if I put data in here, let's put a few figures in. There's five mils, two mils, three mils, just like that at random. And if I, if I go down now, there's nothing there. I would have to total them manually. Uh, but I can instruct Excel to do all those calculations for me, to total them this way and to total them that way. And I'll show you how to do that now. So you go where your, where your total is, where you want your total to be. You click on that, select that square. Then go up to the right here and you'll see a auto sum icon. So just click that. Now you'll see it's put a formula in there. Now it wants you to tell it what cells you want in that auto sum. So there we are. We go right up to the first. And then once you've got that, you can see that they call them ants <laughs> going around your selection. Um, once you've got that, you can let go your left click and then press enter. 
and there you see there's the total it's totaled well it's only one figure in there so that's number five and if I click on that square and I look up here there is my formula now you could put that formula in manually if you wrote exactly that what's written there it'll do exactly the same thing for you and um, but if you just want to understand the formula it equals the sum and what's in brackets are the cells that it's going to sum so it's the sum of b3 and the colon means through to b31 b33 sorry there b33 so it's summing those for us okay then the next thing we want to put a total this way so we'll put our select where you want the total to be i've spelt it spelt the total wrong now this is a good example if you need to correct something you can't just go in there and correct it it's going to appear here and that that's where you can correct it so that was quite a useful mistake there we go you see it's corrected it there okay so now um, we want to put a total in that cell there so we go auto sum now it's assuming i want to do all of these which is not correct because i don't want to add the day to my rainfall figures so you just hover hover here until you get the four arrows then you drag back to there let go now it's that area there but it's, it's made a mistake because uh, it's now moved everything along to the right. But that doesn't matter. We'll, we'll fix that. Now it's telling me that there's a mistake because I'm adding the total into all these figures here. And I don't want to do that. I only want the, the data figures to be added and the total to be in there. I don't want the total to be added to the total, if you know what I mean. So now we've got to fix that. So I'll Click on that square, there's the formula. So it says B3 to N3. N3 is the total. I don't want the total in there. So all I have to do now is click there, backspace, and then put an M. And that's my lot. Now if I click on there now, you see it's corrected. Now the next thing that we want to do is we want see if I put something there now number two it's added but if I all these other figures are not being added because I've only done that top line auto sum but there's a there's a clever little way of spreading that of populating all the other cells with the same formula or, or the formula relative to the row so we go there bottom right black cross left click drag down till you get to just above where the total is let go and it's put all those in now you should see number five has been added number three number two has been added number three has been added so all of those now represent auto sum going this way now we need to do the same here so we'll go to the total there go to the bottom right corner till I get the little black cross left click drag it this time I'm going to drag it onto the total column as well because I want the total to be there and there we go so we've got 7 8 9 12 7 and 5, 12. 2, 7, 9, 12. So that works. So now I can put anything anywhere in here. For instance, there, I'll put another 5. And there it is there. We had 12, so it's 17 now. And there's my 5 that I just put in, in that column there as well. So everything is working. Now you'll notice that when I scroll, my headings disappear. And that's very irritating because when I'm down here, I want to know what month I'm dealing with. So there's a clever little way you can keep that there. 
So all you do is select your first data square. Then you go to view and you go to freeze panes and you go to that one. You can see I've selected that one and that's what it's telling you to do there, the dark blue. Click on that. And now when I move, you see my headings are staying where they are. So that's fantastic. Now the next little trick is you'll notice that some of these months are a bit too long for the uh, default width of these columns. So we're going to need to widen these columns, but it's always an idea to try and keep all your columns the same width, otherwise it looks very scrappy. So uh, what you can do is take, select all these columns, Go to go to the home section and there you'll see a format. Uh, in amongst that format you'll see column width. Now the default column width is 8.43. Now that's got to do with font sizes etc etc and um, there's no point trying to understand that but all you know is that 8.43 is not enough. And if you want to know more about how to adjust column widths, there's many ways of doing it. If you just watch the video at the top of the screen, uh, I go through quite a few ways of doing it there. So anyway, here we know 8.43 is not enough. So we go, let's try 10. So we'll put 10 in there and say, OK. And there we go. Yeah, all the letters are in. So there we go. Then the other thing you can do is you can put borders around your headings for instance uh, this little section here just put a it says, uh, thick border and it shows you the dark area so it's all around you do that and i'll put one here as well and this way Then we may as well go across this way as well. There we go. So now we've got all our headings separate from the data. The other thing you can do is you can perhaps color your headings a different color to the data cells. So you go here with this fill thing and it's, it's quite good to just use a very light subtle color like that for instance and then um, we can do it this way and along the bottom and we may as well go up there as well so now it's easy to see what's data and what's not the other thing you can do is you could every alternate um, row you could also put uh, a color but use a different color because it's data maybe so what we could do is say do that one try another type of color that's better and go there this is just to help you to navigate around your spreadsheet a bit easier. So you could do something like that as well. So there you're starting to take shape and now all you do is every time you get some rainfall, let's say on June the 6th, you've got 10, the 4th, sorry, you've got 10. Now, you'll, nothing will happen until you either click on another square or you press enter. Now you watch. Now you'll see it's gone into that. Add it up there, and go this way, and it's added up there as well. So that's fantastic. And the total, the grand total has changed. So this, this total would be your year-to-date figures. So you could have a look here and see how much rainfall you've had 
up to that point. Or if it's a budget, it could be um, your expenditure year to date. So that's quite useful. Now, just one final point, uh, depending on what you're going to use your spreadsheet for, you may need to uh, format the cells with data and the totals. So let's do that now, I'll just to show you what happens. Just select all the data and totals, and then you go to format, this one on the right here, click that, and then look for format cell there it is and this gives us some options now <clears throat> if say you were doing a budget you might want to format it as currency so if you wanted a dollar sign there you leave it as as it is and two decimal places would be perfect so let's just try that and i'll format it and you'll see what will happen to my data you see, all the, what should be millimetres are now dollars. It's given them that. And uh, there's two decimal places. So obviously, if you were doing a budget, that's how you'd format these cells. But we're not doing a budget. This is for rainfall. But I might say, if I went to number, I might say I want two decimal places uh, because uh, there might be points of a millimetre of rainfall. So let's do that and you'll see what will happen. Now it's putting the two decimal places in but no dollar sign. So it depends on how you format and it depends on what you're using that for. The other point about formatting, I'll just leave that as it is for the moment, is that you can format your heading as well format cells as text so that uh, Excel knows that um, those are text things and, and you won't be able to put um, significant uh, numerals in there so that's another thing you can do with formatting so that's the basics, and I mean, that would get you going on most things up and running in no time at all. And if you hit any problems, there's plenty of, of very good uh, YouTube videos that can help you solve specific problems, and I'll be doing some more as well. So if you enjoyed this video, please like and share it, and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already done so. And we'd love to hear from you. If you have any comments or questions, just scroll down to the bottom of the video and you'll see the comment section there and you can leave us a message there. Thank you very much for watching.